Thank you for joining with us today. It's a real pleasure to welcome you as we come together as a church family to worship the Lord. Today, we don't only have this online service, we have four other services as well. So in that whole sense of our, our church community meeting together to worship the Lord. Psalm 103 encourages us to praise the Lord. I'm going to begin by reading some words from that Psalm. Praise the Lord, O my soul, that all my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Let's pray. Lord, help us to praise you with our whole being. We thank you that you are compassionate, gracious, and abounding in love. Fill us with awe and wonder as we worship today. May we revere you, and may we truly live for you and seek to fulfill your will in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first song, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. we worship together, we bow before the Lord in reverence and fear, for he is holy and sinless. We confess our sins to him. We ask him to forgive us and to help us. And so we join together in the words of the confession. 
Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then the colic, the prayer for this Sunday. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now Andrew is going to read from Matthew 18 where Jesus speaks about forgiveness. A reading from Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of God, heaven is like a king who wants to settle accounts with his servants. As he begins the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At that time, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay you back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt, and let him go. But what, when the servant went out, he found out one of he found one of the servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw this that had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all your debts because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servants just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Father, as we turn to your word now, we ask that your spirit would be our teacher and our guide. Help us to hear, help us to understand, help us to respond. And Lord, even perhaps as we focus on, in on things that may be difficult and challenging for us, we pray for the healing and renewing presence of your Holy Spirit. Lord, guide my thoughts and my words so that what I say is truly from you. In Jesus' name, Amen. You may or may not be able to see this, but I have a pencil with me today that has an eraser on the top. And I suppose the reason that erasers are on the top of pencils is because we make mistakes when we're writing and we want to rub things out and to correct them and sort them out. So there's the pencil just in my pocket. You may not be totally able to see it, but it's there. So we use the eraser to rub out the mistakes that we made or the things we've got wrong when we're writing or drawing. But we also make mistakes in life get things wrong in life. We know that we do, 
and God knows that we do. God knows that people think, say, and do wrong things. But because of Jesus, crucifixion, death, and resurrection, he has made it possible for people to make a fresh start. He has made forgiveness of sin and a restored relationship with God available to all who turn to Jesus in repentance and faith. In that new relationship with God, we are to follow Jesus. We are to live for him in the power of the Holy Spirit. As we follow Jesus, God calls us to various roles, responsibilities and tasks. Today is Vocation Sunday in the Church of Ireland. Today each one of us have an opportunity to think about the tasks, roles or responsibilities to which God has called us or is calling us. An opportunity to consider what he may be saying to us about the future. When we talk about vocation, some people think about ordained ministry. And it may be that God is calling some of us towards ordination. It could be that he is calling some of us to train as diocesan readers, diocesan evangelists or parish readers, or to be involved in children's or youth ministry, or in other aspects of the church's life and ministry and mission. Please do speak to me or contact me if you sense God is calling you to a particular role or responsibility in the church's ministry and mission. However, we shouldn't think of vocation solely in these ways. God calls people to all sorts of roles and responsibilities where they can serve him and be his witnesses. As teachers, as doctors, nurses, health workers, childcare workers, civil servants, farmers, those who work in manufacturing, logistics, banking, retail, in the service industry, or as parents, grandparents, or those who help and support others. This list isn't exhaustive. The important thing is that we are sensitive to God and that we are responding to and fulfilling God's call upon our lives with the help of the Holy Spirit. So I really want to encourage each one of us to press into God as we think and pray about what he is calling us to be and to do. And let's respond to what he's saying to us. When we're followers of Jesus, we will continue to make mistakes. At times we'll disobey and dishonor him. We'll fail to listen and to respond to what he's saying to us. So it's important that we ask him to forgive us and ask the Holy Spirit to help us live as God desires. We join in the confession each Sunday. We've joined in the confession already today, but confessing our sins to God isn't just something for Sundays or something for corporate worship. It should be part of daily life as we ask the Lord to forgive us and help us serve him in newness of life. In the confession, we say that we have sinned against God and against our neighbor, against others. We say we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. We ask God to forgive us. God forgives us when we ask him. And God wants us to be people who forgive others. In our reading, we heard about Peter asking Jesus, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus replied, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times, or 70 times seven, as some translations put it. We also heard the story Jesus told about the king who cancelled the massive debt of one of his servants. When that servant begged for time to pay back a debt, he could never hope to repay. 
And then we heard that servant's unforgiving response to another servant who owed him a small amount of money. And then finally, we heard what the king did as he was told about what the first servant had done. When we have received God's forgiveness, then God longs for us, expects us to be people who forgive others. He longs for and seeks to help us become more like him, more like Jesus. Forgiving others can be difficult and challenging, especially if they have caused us considerable hurt, pain, distress, or disappointment. Forgiveness doesn't mean that we forget, condone, or approve of wrong. It doesn't mean that we ignore or excuse cruelty, abuse, or injustice. Forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean that we will be reconciled to the other person. Forgiving others especially those who have hurt us deeply, can be difficult, very difficult. And yet failing to forgive can imprison us in anger and bitterness, can impact upon our physical, emotional and spiritual well-being. Failing to forgive can hold us back from knowing more of God and experiencing more of God. Forgiveness is the key to freedom. Forgiveness disentangles us from the evil and wrongdoing of others. Forgiveness releases us to get on and live our lives. Forgiveness is a refusal to let our future be determined by our past. Now, it's probably easier to forgive those who say they're sorry for what they have done. But that shouldn't be a precondition of forgiveness. When Jesus was crucified, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Even though there was no sense of sorrow or, or regret on behalf of those who crucified him. In reality, many of the people we forgive may not be even aware that they have hurt us or caused us distress or may not even be aware of the extent of that hurt or distress. For many of us, forgiveness is a process. Again and again we choose to forgive. Often it's a struggle because of the hurt and distress we feel. Again and again, we cry out to God to help us forgive. Sometimes we may even struggle to forgive ourselves for things we have done. It's important that as we receive God's forgiveness, we forgive ourselves for the wrong choices and the wrong decisions we may have made. And of course, it's also important that we forgive God for the ways we think he may have failed us, let us down, or even been unfair. I can't answer for God, but I do urge those of us who are angry with him or disappointed with him to forgive him, to ask him to heal us, restore us, set us free to live for him as we move forward in faith into the future. God, God has made it possible for us and others to know forgiveness of sins through faith in Christ. He wants those who are followers of Christ to be people who forgive. He wants us to be people who respond to his call upon our lives as we press in to know more of him and experience more of him. And so today on this Sunday, when we think about the story Jesus told about forgiveness, as we think about Vocation Sunday, let's respond 
to God as he speaks and ministers into our lives. Let's pray. Father, as we just focus in on your love and on your grace and of your mercy. Thank you that you love us, that you care for us, that you forgive us as we come to you, that you restore us and renew us in so many different ways. And Lord, we all have pasts and things in our past. So we pray, Lord, for healing and restoration and renewal for each one of us. We pray that you'd help us to respond to you, to your call upon our lives, not only to follow Christ, but also to live our lives for him. To become more like Christ. But Lord, also help us to fulfill your call upon our lives, to fulfill your will and your purposes. And may it all be to your honour and to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then we sing, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
sun forbear to shine. Let us pray. Gracious God, we declare your goodness. We celebrate your amazing grace and unending love. We thank you for the way you have revealed your character and nature through Jesus' life and ministry. Thank you for his faithfulness to your will and for his crucifixion, death and resurrection. Thank you that he overcame sin and death and has opened the kingdom of God to all who put their trust in him. Lord, we praise you for all the ways you work in our lives. Forgive us and help us when we fail to listen to you. Transform our lives to the power of the Holy Spirit and enable us to live faithfully as your people. Help each one of us respond to your call upon our lives, to the future stretching out before us, rich in promise and full of possibilities for service and witness. Give us faith and courage, and may the life of Christ shine through us. We pray for those who are weighed down by guilt, are burdened by past mistakes. Help them to understand that in you they can find true forgiveness and a fresh start. We pray for those who persist in committing evil, causing pain and suffering for others. May they be, may they be touched and transformed, their lives changed by the love and grace of God. We pray for all who have been or are being hurt, deceived, abused, betrayed or let down by others. We pray for refugees, for those living in the aftermath of disasters, for those who live in places of war or violence, for all working to restrict the spread and impact of the coronavirus. For those who are ill, for those who care for them, for those who have been bereaved, for those who are anxious or uncertain about the future. And we pray for those in authority. Lord, we pray for your guidance, for healing, for restoration and transformation. And in the moment of quiet, we bring our own particular thanksgivings and request to God our Father. And we sum up all our prayers as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the Holy Spirit you may abide in hope. And may the blessing of God Almighty, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Uh, and then before we go, just a few announcements. Uh, our two community help initiatives continue. Uh, our Baby Plus pop-up stall providing new and pre-loved clothes for babies and toddlers continues on Saturday mornings from 10 to 12 in the church hall here. Our call and collect meal initiative continues where people phone in on Mondays between 9 and 6 um, to book a meal to be collected on Wednesday. Meals must be pre-booked. I mentioned at the beginning about church services. We're going to move to four services on a Sunday, three of them at 10 o'clock, one in Holy Trinity at 10 morning prayer, then a service in St. Patrick's Church at 10 as well. Now the, the, the space uh, is so limited there, we're asking people to phone and pre-book a space, phone the office uh, during the week in the lead up to the Sunday between uh, 9.30 and 12.30, just to book a, a spot at that service. And then there's a, an all-age service in St. Patrick's Church Hall at 10 as well. And then there's a service, an all-age service here in the Church Hall at Holy Trinity at 11.15. We'd love you to join us at, at any of those services if you feel able to do so, but our online services will continue and we pray that God will bless you and sustain you and encourage you, whether you meet with us online or whether you come and join with us in some of the other services. Just want to mention Butterflies of Hope and there will be something on the website and Facebook about this as well. It's an exciting diocesan competition for the month of September. Butterflies of Hope is an encouragement to the whole church family to send out a message of blessing and hope to the community and beyond. A butterfly emerges from a chrysalis to become something beautiful. And that reminds us of the message of hope found in Jesus Christ. So everyone is invited to design or to color in a butterfly that will bring a message of hope from our church to the community and beyond. And there will be prizes for the best church display. So as we gather these in, then we will put them on display. Uh, so please do be involved in this. Uh, it would be great to have a whole host of butterflies, not just from children, but from adults uh, and from everyone. Then to mention the Diocesan Lebanon Appeal, uh, as we know and saw on television and heard and on, on media about the explosion at Beirut which caused such suffrage, suffering and such damage. Um, the Bishop has asked every parish to contribute towards the relief of those most impacted by that disaster. If you're bringing your contribution to church or to the parish office, please put it in an envelope and write Lebanon Appeal on the envelope. You may wish to put your name on the envelope. If you're posting a check to the parish office, please put a note inside indicating that the money is for the Lebanon appeal. And then please follow the guidance on the parish website if you wish to make a one-off donation using internet banking. I'd mentioned uh, previously about painting the railings at St. Patrick's Church. Uh, people can be involved in that if they again would contact the office and we coordinate them coordinated in that way. Connect groups will be getting up and going, so if you'd like to be involved, those who are involved will hear from their own leaders, uh, but if you'd like to be involved, then please do contact me or contact the office. And I'll continue to check out the website or Facebook for more information about these things and other things that are happening in the life of the church. So may the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.